Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to be picking up where we left off in the basic AI tutorial. Now, where we left off, we would basically gotten it to set it up so that it will move once it meets the right conditions. However, there are a few things that I want to address first before we get too far. Now, the cone of vision, it works perfectly well. It did bother me, however, though, that it was a little bit on the narrow side. So, I went into the angle detector and I increased the viewing angle to 80 degrees. Before it was 45 degrees. Now 45 plus 45 is, if you know your math, is 90. And a 90 degree viewing angle is a little bit too narrow, so I upgraded that. And there is one thing that I did overlook in the movement. There was an option that I had completely missed. It's called Ignore Vertical. Now when you have that checked, it basically means it's going to lock the object onto the Ver it's going to lock it from gaining or losing any vertical attitude by its own actions. It will still fall because it has a rigid body on it, but it won't move up or move down. Okay, so let's get to it. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to take a look at what we're going to be doing. Now, I want to make a melee attack on this one, and a melee attack, if you think about it, has three distinct moves to it not counting when you're carrying the weapon around, you have to lift it, and then you have to strike, and then you have to pull it back. So let's create three states to reflect each of those. So, readying, strike, and recover. And when we... Basically, when it comes to it, the move towards, it does have a f what's called the finish event and the finish distance. Now, we can use these to our advantage to say when it reaches a certain point, it will then go into the readying. So, let's... Let's create the action to ready. Yep. And the finish distance. Well, let's add that in here first. Now the finish distance basically means how close we want to get before we'll do so. Now it's got a state of 1, but that's a little bit too far away, so let's move it back. Now the distance between the two is roughly 20, 25 units. So let's say... Five. That's a good round. That's a good number. Mm, a little too close for my taste. Now you can play around with this number to figure out what value you prefer. It all depends on how comfortable you are. Okay. Now it's gotten to that point, and I think eight is a good distance. Now there is one thing we have to do though, because since if it is moving, since it has a rigid body, technically it has mass. And what happens when something with mass suddenly stops moving? Inertia takes over. Now you didn't easily see it on here, but I'm hoping that I can get it to trigger so you can. Well, maybe not. But it has given me some issues like that before. So let's it doesn't necessarily hurt the fact, though, that when you're readying the weapon, we're still going to be moving. So, and we're also going to be looking towards the enemy. So let's just copy these actions and place them in. Now, we don't need to have a finish event since we're going to be doing something else. But let's move this down a bit. So let's try four. not quite sure I like that bump. Let's make it five. There. Okay, good. Alright. Now in here, we're going to be using a weight action, since it will handle time. And I'm going to put one in each of these as well. 
Now they're going to be different time frames, so and let's get the finished event in. Let's wire them together, and I'm going to wire that back to the idle. So finished, finished, okay. Now in the strike, there I'm going to also take this smooth look at and copy that over as well. But I'm not going to be copying over the movement. So let's paste the actions before. And let's see how this works. Okay, so it's not clicking over. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Oh, when you get on a roll, you sometimes overlook some things. Okay. That seems to work. The timing could be adjusted, so the strike is going to be... It's about 0.2 seconds, and the recovery is going to be about a half a second. Now, this is all based off of the animations that I was able to create on the object that we are going to be telling it to animate. Now, here it is. It's pretty big. And I've already basically, I've made this in a separate package and created the animation as well. Now, since there is a tutorial that goes through all the basics step-by-step -step on how to create and harness the animation, I'm going to pause it right here and get this done. But I will put a link in the description below so that you know where you can find this video. Okay, so I'm back. Now I've gone ahead and I've created all four animations as well as added the material and the box collider that we're going to be using to give it the area where it's going to be able to deal damage. And let's just drop that on here since we want it to move. Now this is a little bit of a shortcut because this is just a tutorial at this point. But if you were to use this, you could use the basic enemy as a framework, take away the mesh, and where the test war X is, you could drop in your geometry and control it in much the same way that we're doing here. So if you wanted a full character, you could do that. So let's reset position, rotation, and let's position it. Let's scale it down a bit too. We don't need it to be ginormous. A ginormous axe would be cool, though. <laughs> A bit smaller. Alright. So now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and finish up the movement. Since we already have the animation set up, and it's ready to accept an event, and these are globally viewable since we're going to need to access them from outside of this finite state machine. Let's go ahead and get some events. Now we're going to be using the send event in the state machine subsection. So let's drop that in. And move that to the very top. Oh, there it goes. Alright. So, game object. Specify game object. Test for X. And the event. So, this is moving. Let's use the idle. And let's copy this event. Paste it in each of these. And this is recovery to recover. To strike. And to raise. Okay, so let's give this one a shot. OK, 
Okay, one slight hitch. And I think I know what's going on here. In the Test War X, the collider is not a trigger. So let's make it a trigger. There it goes. Okay, so it looks like we've got it to do what we need it to. And in the next video, I'm going to be going over how to tell it to basically calculate damage, as well as going over a few basic graphical user interface tips and tricks to give us a readout of the health so that every time he strikes, he does damage. But other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if you like this video, feel free to uh, rate and subscribe. And I hope you have a good one.